Hello, everyone. Okay, truth be told, this is a test to see if I have the tech working. <laughs> I totally redid my video setup. So I would love if you could help me test this and let me know if you can hear me and you can see me and let me know where you are watching from. In theory, I should be able to see your chats, whether you're from uh, YouTube, Facebook, or LinkedIn, uh, all in my screen right now. So let me know if you can see me. I feel like I'm in a bit of a, a, another universe right now. <laughs> Um, but I do have some things I want to talk about today because a couple of weeks ago, I did a little Q&A in my weekly newsletter where I asked everyone um, to submit questions related to the job search. Um, so I selected a few that I would love to answer for you. Um, and then if we have time, maybe we will do some from you as well. I am just going to do a little bit uh, of checking over on my other monitor here. So it looks like this is working on Facebook, although I'm not seeing the comments, so that's problematic. Um, uh -oh. um, let me check YouTube. I don't know that we're actually live on YouTube. This is very bizarre. Um, I might restart this again just for fun. Uh, give me a second here while I Q&A this really quickly. Um, but if you want to hang out, we will eventually get to some Q&A. But I'm really just doing this as a test because I have three live streams coming up on YouTube this week. So I want to make sure it all works. Um, let me see here though, because I'm not seeing any chat at all. So I'm kind of wondering, maybe this didn't work. <laughs> uh, all right. Two minutes ago. So it's working on Facebook. Okay. There's someone watching on Facebook. Hello, Facebook. <laughs> um, YouTube. It doesn't appear to be playing on YouTube. That's interesting. Hmm. Videos, let's see. Oh, we are live. Okay, great, we're live on YouTube. <laughs> I just can't see your chat messages. And then the last thing I wanna check is, are we live on, uh, not Instagram, LinkedIn, because you cannot go live on Instagram while you are live on the other places. Anyway, um, it looks like we might actually be live on Instagram. No, LinkedIn. See, I'm clearly super new to this multi-streaming uh, world of video here. So let me just see um, what's happening over on LinkedIn. Well, I guess we'll find out later. Um, and as I said, I'm also just trying to figure out why. Oh, maybe that's where the comments come in. Uh, show comments window. Oh, that would be nice. Okay, well, it looks like you can see me and hear me because I haven't seen any messages on Facebook to say otherwise. So, okay, Ali on Facebook says it looks good. Okay, and oh my gosh, I'm seeing your comments in, okay, it is a technology miracle, it's working, oh my gosh. Okay, this is amazing. So, uh, everyone, welcome. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Sarah Duty. I'm a user, researcher, and experience designer, and I am an accidental founder. Um, what I mean when I say I'm a researcher and experience designer is, uh, obviously research is pretty clear. When I say experience designer though, what I mean is I focus more on the experience. So the customer journey, the experience going through certain flows, um, how certain uh, products fit together, whether digital and 
not on a screen as well. So I don't do pixel perfect design. I don't do uh, detailed interface design that a developer would then, you know, go develop. Um, I don't do that. Way, way earlier in my career, I used to do that. And then I realized, oh my gosh, there is honestly too much to keep up with. And the field was just moving so fast, I felt really overwhelmed. So uh, years and years ago, I kind of made a decision that I do not do visual design anymore, unless it's for my own web pages and newsletter and YouTube graphics and stuff like that. Um, so that is a little bit about me. And when I say I'm a founder, yes, I founded um, kind of like an online education company related to user experience. Um, so our first product is called the UX Portfolio Formula. Maybe some of you have heard about it, but it helps you create your portfolio more efficiently, faster. Um, I've been doing that since 2017, so it's our four-year anniversary this month, honestly, or maybe next month. It's June or July. Anyway, so um, that's what I do these days, and I still do UX consulting um, on a really, really limited basis, so uh, I don't have clients, you know, all of the time, but every now and then I'm still working with clients because A, I love it, and B, um, I still wanna be doing this work. I really love what I do, and it honestly doesn't feel like work to me. And when I'm not working with clients, I am teaching about user experience, the job search, and how to navigate your career, which leads us to some of the Q&A. You know, first though, before we get into the questions that I've kind of curated from my newsletter, but which if you are not receiving my newsletter, um, I do a newsletter every other Tuesday um, it's called the UX Notebook, and you can subscribe by going to saraduty.com slash newsletter. Someday I will figure out how to make that appear on the screen, but for now, uh, saraduty.com slash newsletter if you want to get that. But uh, since I said I'm a researcher, I would love to do a little bit of research on you. So. I have a couple of questions for you. Okay, number one is, what stage are you at in your career right now? Are you one of three things? Are you what I call a career launcher, where you are just getting started in your UX career? And really, this might be the first kind of career of your adult life. So are you a career launcher? Number two is, are you a career switcher? So are you someone who is coming into user experience from another uh, previous career? And then person three would be a career climber, meaning you've been in user experience or product for a while and you are looking to get to that next level, get to that next step or goal you have for your career. So are you a launcher, a switcher, or a climber. I spent a lot of time coming up with those and I even made little graphics and things which you're not going to see today. But um, I'm super curious what stage everyone is at. So I am uh, coming into... Okay, people are replying. I'm so excited. I have been... Video and technology like this is a little intimidating for me and I have been procrastinating getting this all set up and it is working. I can't believe it. Okay, so we have a lot of career switchers here. Jonathan and Curtis and Estras and Colleen and Marie, Gloria. Okay, Siren is a career climber. Reshma is a climber. Monica is a switcher. Mel is a switcher. Bobby is a launcher on the countdown now. Awesome, you must be graduating from some type of program very soon. Okay, so we have people from all different stages of their career, which does not surprise me. Now, I would love to know um, one word answer, so the chat doesn't go too wild here on me, but what is the number one challenge you are facing right now? Okay, maybe it can be five words maximum. 
What's the number one challenge you are facing right now? Um, since we're all at many different stages, some of you might be saying, my challenge is just getting to graduation of this boot camp I'm in. Or maybe if you are a career climber and you've been working in user experience or product for a while, maybe your challenge is, man, I've been doing this for 10 years. I want to move away from my current role, but I don't know where to go. Like the industry is so different from when I started out and you kind of want to rebrand yourself or kind of niche down a little bit. And maybe you're a switcher and you're like, I don't know how to position myself based on my previous career as a journalist or as a therapist. I don't know. Um, cool. So, okay. We have some answers rolling in here. Okay. So some of you are saying that Building a portfolio is your challenge. Not enough experience. Getting experience without experience, Veronica said. Yep, I've heard that a million times. Um, let's see. Okay. Niching down. Jonathan said niching down. Yeah. My hunch is there's a lot of people out there who have this challenge where you have been doing a little bit of everything and you've been operating somewhat as a generalist because A, you wanted to, which I think is really smart early in your career, or you just happened to be at a company where they needed you to be a generalist. So maybe you didn't start out thinking you were going to do research, but here you are now doing a little bit of everything, including research. So yeah, niching down is a big one, Jonathan. Um, let's see. We have, let's see. Yeah, a lot of people said niching down. Presentations for the interviews. Yep. Fabio says building a portfolio and choosing an industry, that's really interesting and that's a good insight because if you have goals later on in your career where you want to work in healthcare or, I don't know, space, like work at NASA or something, <laughs> then you need to be strategic about the types of companies and industries you choose so that by the time you are applying for that job at NASA, for example, which someone who worked with me really did get hired at NASA. I need to look up their information. <laughs> but um, if that's your goal, then you probably want to be targeting certain companies or certain types of roles um, in order to help you get that experience that will make you look really attractive when you apply for that job at NASA. I don't know why I'm thinking about space right now. Uh, probably because I'm so over the moon about having all this technology working. Okay, I'm pretty cheesy sometimes, guys. Um, all right, so um, let's see. I wanted to do that little poll about the stages we're at and the challenges we are having. Um, not for my purposes, because honestly, I've been studying this world of user experience uh, when it comes to user experience education and getting hired and the hiring process and everything. I've been studying this for four years, so nothing that you said surprised me. But I want you to realize if you are struggling, you're not the only one. There are so many other people that share this uh, similar struggle because User experience is so in demand right now, and there are so many people trying to find roles in user experience that A, it could be feeling pretty challenging. However, I will also say there are so many people out there that do not really UX their career and UX the process of getting their next job. And as a result of that, there are a lot of really, really poor, for lack of a better word, portfolios and candidates floating out there. You might have the skills, but if you cannot communicate those skills, then you are going to have a really challenging time finding that next role. So the good news is, even if you feel like this is a struggle, um, there is... I guess we could say there's a little bit of a low bar sometimes in the eyes of recruiters and hiring managers because when I talk to recruiters and hiring managers, I'm paraphrasing here, but one major theme that comes out is people do not give their portfolio, the interview preparation, even their job search, the care and attention 
and intention that it requires. So if you are struggling, you need to step back and think about what parts of the UX process have I not applied to whatever I'm doing, whether it's finishing your resume, finishing your portfolio, preparing for interviews, whatever it is. Did you, let's talk about your resume. Did you just jump right into Illustrator or Figma or whatever you made your resume in these days and start trying to like do it? Or meaning, did you just jump right into the design or did you take a step back and think to yourself, what is the job I want in the future, in my next job, but also two years from now? And then really do a little bit of content strategy around that and write your resume before you design it. So that is an example of what I mean when I say we need to UX our careers. Because have you ever worked at a company where the company had an idea for a feature or a product or something and they jumped right to the design. Has that ever happened to you? Maybe you do freelance and you had a freelance client like this and they're like, no, we don't need to do wireframes. We don't need to do research. We're good. We can just jump right. Just give me the interactive prototype in two weeks. Has that ever happened to any of you? Super, super curious. We have a bit of a delay here, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. It happens all the time. We've all been in situations where we've been asked to uh, jump right to design, right? Or you've heard of a company or a startup that does this. And what happens when those startups, I use startups because they're pretty notorious for this, jumping right to the design, what happens? Well, they have a product that has a ton of features that probably no one wants. And then what do they do? They launch that product. And then what happens? No one uses that product because the features, no one wants them. And why is that? Because they jumped right to design and they didn't do research, et cetera, et cetera. It is a gigantic domino effect. So yes, and you guys are, okay, we're on the same page. It's terrible. Gomar says, yep, yep. Lindsay says yes, or Lindy says yes, and it creates a double the work. Okay, Lindy gets the virtual high five right now because yes, when you jump right to design, what happens is you have to go back and redo a bunch of stuff over and over and over because you realize all of these things that you could have realized earlier on. So that's just one example of how we need to apply UX principles, product design principles to our careers. And when it comes to your job search, your resume, your portfolio, your LinkedIn, all of those things, you can't just jump to design. So are you doing research? Are you doing some low fidelity work? Are you um, thinking about the user of your resume or the quote user of the interview you're gonna go to? So hopefully that helps you in some way, just kind of reframe what you are doing and how you're approaching your job search or getting to that next step in your career. Um, Ricky summed it up really well and said design debt. Yep, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And I think when we can, you know, getting your next job is like a super personal, emotional, stressful thing. And you right now, you're kind of like a founder, a startup founder who is so close to their idea that you need someone, like for example, me, when I work with a lot of startups, I come in and I'm thinking to myself, these people are too close to the idea, they're emotionally attached, they think this is gonna be the next Netflix, um, and they're gonna buy like, I don't know, a sports team or something after they sell the, the company. And they need me to come in and say like, let's put on the brakes, let's do some research, let's look at this more objectively and more holistically, right? Maybe you've been in that situation too if you've ever worked as um, a consultant with startups and things like that, but you are kind of like that founder right now. So that's why if you can hold on to certain parts of the UX process that are relevant to each step of your job search, it will make it a lot easier and it will be help you be more objective 
and think of things more strategically and intentionally. Um, okay, I'm glad this is helpful. You guys are chiming in in the chat, which my mind is still blown that all this tech is working. <laughs> so, um, okay, I do really have some questions I wanted to hit on here. Um, super, super quick, because I want to keep this short and we're at about 20 minutes right now. So as I said in the beginning, um, I asked everyone on my newsletter um, to submit questions related to the job search and interviews and things like that. And I believe I have three topics I want to hit on, okay? So question, or question number one, and I tried to choose questions that were um, relevant for all stages of uh, our careers, whether you're a launcher, a switcher or a climber. So question number one relates to, um, let's see, question number one relates to, I just got to pull up my notes here. Um, okay, if you are a career launcher, this question is for you. This came up a lot. People said, are a lot of jobs, um, or sorry, they said a lot of jobs are asking for years and years of experience, like three to five years, right? It's almost like default in every job description that you're seeing. So a lot of the jobs are asking for three to five years of experience. Um, should I still apply to these roles even if I don't have three to five years of experience? So I'm asked this question all of the time and my answer is yes. You should apply to these roles definitely on the condition that when you read that job description, if you match up to everything else they are looking for and you're confident in your resume and you're confident that your LinkedIn is going to catch their eye and you're confident that if you got an interview opportunity, you could go in and present some projects from your portfolio. So even if you don't have this three to five years of experience, I would say still apply. And I've had some little email conversations and Twitter DMs and stuff with recruiters and hiring managers, and they say the same thing because oftentimes that is just something that kind of goes on the job uh, description, but it's not a deal breaker. If they find someone that has one year of experience that meets all the other criteria, then it's possible you're going to get an interview. So just because it says all of these quote requirements on the job description, doesn't mean you shouldn't apply. Now, that doesn't mean you can apply to jobs where you meet like one out of 20 of the requirements. That would just not make sense. But regarding this years of experience, because this is the one that I think many, many, many of you get like mentally hung up on and you see it and you just think like, no, no, it's almost like this has become like an excuse for not applying or something. And it's almost like there's this like, fight happening between candidates and companies. And the candidates are like, how can I get hired if you tell me I need three to five years of experience? Well, maybe you don't need three to five years of experience. But if you let that be a mental block and prevent you from applying, you'll never know. So um, that's why I always say to people, just because it says three to five doesn't mean you shouldn't apply as long as you meet all of the other requirements for the most part and as long as you feel like your materials and your ability to present your skills and experience is gonna stand out um okay so hopefully that is helpful to some of you who have maybe been feeling like there's no rules to apply to stop it <laughs> find these roles that maybe you do match to and just ignore that three to five years of experience and go for it. The worst that happens is you don't hear back. But I've had plenty of people work with me and apply to roles like that and end up getting interviews. So that is for our career launchers here. Um, I, I noticed some of you said you have to go. Okay, so I'm going to be doing more of these live streams over the next two weeks. I have three scheduled. I might do more. Um, now that I have my video set up, uh, rolling. So the best way to um, find out about these is to follow me on YouTube because I know it's always going to work on YouTube. Um, and then I guess 
If you're on LinkedIn, follow me on LinkedIn. And if you're on Facebook, make sure you like the Facebook page and turn on notifications. So then you'd be able to find out when these go live. I think that's how this works. So we'll find out. Um, but yeah, if you have to go, no worries. Okay, we're almost at time. So question number two, this relates to which projects should you put in your portfolio? And this question is, my project did not follow the perfect UX process. Can I still put it in my portfolio? This is an exact question someone asked me. I cut and pasted it. And this, I what, what the person means is, and maybe this has happened to you, let me know in the chat, but have you ever worked on a UX project and then it didn't involve research for whatever reason. Research got cut, the timeline got cut, the budget got cut, or I've had this happen where another team did research and you were kind of given the research and then you and your team are going to be the ones kind of make the thing, right? So can you include a project in your portfolio that did not follow the quote perfect UX process or do all of the steps. So like I said, maybe you have a project and it didn't do any research. Can you include that? The answer is yes. So one thing I am noticing in a lot of people's portfolios and just in general is this notion that every single project must follow the, I should have pulled up the graphic, but one of those like generic human centered design graphics or the double diamond uh, graphic. And it's like, discover, define, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then you think to yourself, oh, we didn't do discovery, so I can't include it in my portfolio. Here's the thing. Not every project that you work on will ev always follow the human-centered design process of the day that's popular on Medium or something like that, okay? I have worked on so many projects that didn't do research or that did research and then the research, we plan to do research and then the research got cut. So some projects are not always going to follow the same design process. And I would argue if you're applying in a company and they get hung up on that, well, they say, well, we don't see any research in this, so, you know, <laughs> we're gonna end this interview or something. <laughs> um, if that happened, I would think to myself, thank you for letting me know your thoughts on that, because if someone doesn't understand that sometimes the process is a little different or life happens and a budget gets cut or something gets cut, then I don't think I would wanna work for that person because honestly, I would think they don't understand like, UX and product development in the real world. So if you have a project in your portfolio that uh, doesn't follow your thought on what the perfect uh, UX um, process or product development process is, yes, you can still put it in your portfolio. And I would add, um, a lot of people say, well, can I include it if it didn't launch? Again, the answer is yes. Just because a product didn't launch doesn't mean you can't include it in your portfolio. It doesn't mean you did not do great work. Um, I, I don't know how many projects I've worked on in my career where clients spent like tons of time and money. We had like probably hundreds of wireframes. And then for whatever reason, this is mostly startups, for whatever reason, they're like, nah, we're not, we're not gonna do that anymore. Would I still include that in my portfolio? Uh, yes, because it doesn't mean that the work I did wasn't a good indicator and good evidence of my skills and experience. So hopefully that's helpful for some of you who may have projects like that and you think, oh, that didn't launch, I can't include that, or, um, uh, we didn't do research, I can't include that one. Okay, let me know if that was helpful in the chat or if now you've realized to yourself, oh good, there's projects that I can include that maybe I had previously thought, no, nah, I can't include that because it didn't launch or we didn't follow the double diamond process or whatever process you think is perfect. <laughs> um, Jonathan says, yeah, I have a lot of those. Okay, good, um, cool. 
Okay, I'm glad you guys are still with me. So last question, um, we're going a little bit over, but last question is in regards to what I call um, authentic relationship building. So a lot of you ask me, how do I build my network? And I cannot stand that question. I cannot stand the idea of networking or network building and, and this approach and mentality around networking because oftentimes, A, people feel icky about it and it feels kind of like sleazy. And also B, when you say build my network, that kind of implies you're focused on the size of your network, right? You're like, if I can just get a thousand followers on Twitter or 500 connections on LinkedIn, I'm going to get hired. So what I want to <laughs> implore uh, today is that stop focusing on building the number of connections that you have on LinkedIn, because as you're doing that, what you're not doing is you're not actually connecting with people. You're not making connections. You're getting another number in the number of people you're connected to on LinkedIn. But how many of those people have you ever exchanged a message with or do you know anything about, right? So when I when I am asked about networking, my first piece of advice is stop networking. Like totally let's reframe it. It's not about networking. It's not about size of your network. It should be about the quality of the relationships that you are building. So how do you build quality relationships with people? Well, honestly, I think dating is a great example, right? Imagine, you know, you're out uh, with your friends at a bar or something, and you maybe you've had this experience where someone comes up to you and is like, clearly just a little bit of a weirdo and they come over and they give you a one-liner or something another example would be i was at a professional networking event once and i'm not kidding you i was sitting at a table and this guy walked over to me and he went like this he did this he just threw his business card at me and he's like let me know if you have any projects i was like ugh, let me rip that up right now that's inauthentic. So you've probably had inauthentic relationships or not relationships, interactions when it comes to social things like dating or networking events. Ugh. Um, you don't want to do that. So how do you um, form authentic relationships? Um, we don't have time to go into all of that today, but I'll tell you what I did early in my career. I made it a point when I saw someone that I thought, oh, I want to get to know them or they would be a good person to maybe like have in in my circle. I'm going to try and not say the word network, but, you know, no professionally. What I would do is, for example, if I was going to connect with them on LinkedIn, I would always add a note to the connection request. Now, you have to be on desktop to do this. As far as I know, you still can't do this on mobile. So when you connect with someone on LinkedIn, add a note. But don't just say, I love your work, or you have nice hair, which I get sometimes, or random things. What is going to make you stand out when someone, when you request to connect with someone is include some little fact or tidbit to let me know that you have like read one of my articles or you watched a talk I gave or something. So try and have some type of connection point, or I like to call it an anchor, where when you're reaching out to someone, a lot of you have said like, it's intimidating to email people or reach out to people, what should I say? Well, find an anchor, find a commonality. So for example, if you were gonna connect with me, and hopefully not everyone goes and does this, cause I, my LinkedIn is such a, a mess right now, but, you know, read an article and say, hey, I read your article about this. I really like that, blah, blah, blah. That's going to stand out much more than just like, hey, I like your hair. Um, so that is tip number one. Now, if it's someone that uh, maybe you found on LinkedIn and you don't know if they wrote any articles, this is what I used to do. 
I used to go through their LinkedIn profile and if they worked at a company like I was really interested in or they went to a school I was really interested in or maybe that I went to, um, I would mention that and find the anchor. Sometimes I would even go to their uh, Twitter and see if they had any like interesting tweets and say like, I really like that thing you tweeted and blah, 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 got me thinking. So when you're forming authentic relationships, to form authentic relationships, you need to find anchors. Um, that's my tip for today. So I hope this is helpful. Um, and yeah, you want to not make it transactional. Um, because here's the thing, if you're just going on LinkedIn and saying, connect, 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 okay, you're gonna have a big number, but you will not have an initial spark, an initial uh, conversation going, because sometimes I've exchanged emails with people like six months ago, 12 months ago, and then I think they would be a really good person to ask about this or to invite to do this or that the other. So I will just go back and pull up that email thread and say, hey, I know it's been a while and blah, 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 and then pick it up, right? But if you don't ever start an initial conversation, then you'll never have a conversation to go back and like pick it up when you really do want to ask that person about a job you saw at, that, at their company or something like that. Um, okay, everyone, that is all we have time for. I have a lot more uh, things to share with you in the next couple of weeks. Um, so make sure you uh, are following me on wherever you're viewing me right now. But as I said, definitely, I'm very confident uh, the YouTube lives will always work. So probably you just want to go follow me on YouTube <laughs> to, to be sure you don't miss anything. And then, like I said, I do have my newsletter, which goes out every other Tuesday. We have one going out tomorrow. It's um, sarahduty.com slash newsletter. Um, and that's how you can stay up to date with what is going on. But if this was helpful, let me know in the comments. I'm going to go back through to all the platforms and read all the comments because there's way too many to read um, live right now. Um, and thank you for helping me test my tech setup. I think everything is working. I think our video quality has improved a lot. I have a different camera and I have another cable I'm gonna use for a different camera in a couple of days to kind of experiment. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope this was helpful and I will talk to you very soon. Have a great rest of your Monday. Bye everyone.